Hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, June 3rd webinar here with uh, Larry Kotlikoff. Uh, my name is Alex Kotlikoff. I'm Larry's son. Uh, we're, today, we're going to be looking at um, Maxify Planner. And uh, this is a webinar uh, uh, that's available to anyone, but is uh, uh, we've made um, uh, mostly available to uh, existing Maximize My Social Security users. Um, I just wanted to say a couple things before we start here, and I'm going to hand it off to him. I wanted everyone to know that we have a 20% uh, discount uh, for uh, for new purchases of Maxify. Uh, uh, I'll give you the code here, uh, and uh, uh, but just let, to let you know that we're going to be sending the information about this in a subsequent email, along with the recording of this webinar and uh, the uh, the PowerPoint. Uh, that we're going to be using today. Uh, the code is capital WEB6320, and it'll be valid uh, until June 21st. Again, that's a 20% discount. So um, I think that's it. I'm going to hand it off now to Larry, and uh, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, it's great to be with you all. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I want to tell you about Maxify Planner. I know you're mostly all familiar with our social security tool, Maximize My Social Security. Uh, Maxify uh, does everything uh, that Maximize uh, Social Security does. Uh, it has a few less uh, social security reports, but otherwise it does um, uh, all the calculations that uh, the important calculations that Maximize My Social Security does. But in addition, it does uh, full lifetime financial planning taking into account uh, your social security decisions, including your optimi optimal social security decisions. So I'm gonna spend uh, some time taking you through the program, giving you a feel for it, and then we'll leave maybe 15 or 20 minutes at the end for some Q&A, and, uh, and I can stay as long as you like, and we can keep talking and answer any questions. I know this is a very difficult time for everybody. Lots of you, um, have lost your job or some part of your salary. Uh, that even goes for college professors. Uh, we're facing salary cuts. So we're all in this boat um, uh, to a large extent together. And uh, I'm hoping everybody stays safe and that we will pull out of this very quickly. Um, but anyway, let me uh, suggest that uh, this tool can be very helpful for readjusting your financial plan which we all have to do given that interest rates are so much lower than they were and that we've, some of us have lost our, uh, much of our income or some of our income. So we have to be as clever as possible going forward to uh, deal with our finances and certainly not leave any money on the table. And Maxify's title is uh, connected to trying to maximize your finances to get the most lifetime spending out of your um, financial situation just like Maximize My Social Security is uh, oriented towards getting you the highest lifetime benefits from your Social Security participation. So the, um, uh, the, the key thing about Maxify, in addition to trying to uh, get you the highest lifetime spending, is that it's doing this based on an economics-based approach to financial planning, not a conventional financial planning approach. Now, I'm an economist. I'm a professor of economics at Boston University. And economists uh, have been in the business of studying personal financial planning for uh, literally 100 years, uh, since the work of Irving Fisher, uh, a Yale professor in the 1920s. Uh, economists have been working on personal finance and you may have heard about people getting Nobel Prizes in finance or in areas like life cycle economics over the years. This is all connected to uh, financial planning, fundamentally personal financial planning. But uh, this is the first uh, economy. I'm the first economist, uh, and this is the first economics-based uh, uh, company that is actually uh, delivering what economic science says to tell people to do about their financial finances, about their personal finances. Conventional planning has been established uh, in the post-war period by uh, 
financial planners and uh, 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 major financial companies. And it has some connection to economics-based planning, but not too much, not a very uh, deep connection. So it's recommending things that are often uh, at entire at complete odds to what economics recommends. Uh, re economics is about, again, calculating your highest uh, lifetime spending, which really translates into uh, what can you spend every year uh, and do so on a sustainable basis so that you have the highest sustainable living standard. So living standard in our, uh, from our programs, uh, from our program's perspective, refers to your lifetime discretionary spending. What do you get? What do you get to spend over the rest of your lifetime, apart from paying taxes, apart from paying for your housing expenses like your mortgage, mortgage expenses, um, any alimony payments, any other off-the-top expenses, college tuition. Those are fixed expenses. But apart from that, you have discretionary spending. And if we uh, take discretionary spending per person in a household with a couple adjustments for economies and shared living, the fact that two can live more cheaply than one, and the fact that ch kids are typically cheaper than adults, uh, then we've got your uh, what we call your annual living standard. And Max Maxify is focused on not just getting you the highest lifetime spending, but also having it a, be a smooth uh, living standard, making it sustainable, making it basically the same number per effective household member through time. And that's really what you need to have peace of mind uh, because you want to know that you're able to maintain your living standard in the, into the future. That's really what financial planning is all right, all about. And we uh, are focused uh, on giving you a plan that uh, gets you to the very uh, end of life, in, indeed to your maximum age of life if you make it that long. So we're trying to protect users by being very, very conservative in our assumptions, having people plan to live to the maximum age, age of life, which they might, making sure that our life insurance recommendations are recommending to the dollar uh, exactly what survivors need so they have the same living standard um, regardless of whether or not somebody dies or not. And then we also want to try and uh, safely raise people's living standards. So, so uh, smoothing people's living standard and uh, protecting it and raising it, those are three key things in our software. And uh, I'm, I'm now going to uh, kind of take you uh, through uh, a little bit more about the, the tool, and then I'm going to illustrate the tool via a case study. But I do want to say if you're an MMSS, a Maximize My Social Security user, that as soon as you log in, you're going to be uh, given um, some instructions, very simple instructions for how to import your Social Security earnings history from MMSS back into Maxify so that that will uh, work seamlessly. So here we have um, uh, the, the essence of economics-based uh, financial planning. Uh, and again, it derives from the life cycle theory of consumption. It goes back 100 years. Uh, we've uh, really expanded the model to include all areas of personal finance, everything that economics has to say about personal finance, we have incorporated in our program. And the key prediction uh, as a kind of reference is this consumption smoothing, having a stable, sustainable, smooth living standard, whatever words you wanna use, that's the goal, not to have to end up eating cat food at the end of your days. So consumption smoothing, why do we wanna have a smooth living standard? We instinctively wanna do that because uh, Eating our first cupcake uh, when we've had no cupcakes to eat uh, is a whole lot more pleasurable than eating our 20th cupcake after we've already eaten 19. So we have diminishing returns from, uh, from extra consumption, and that's called satiation. So consuming a whole lot more at a point in time when we're not hungry anymore, it doesn't make us much happier. And that's why we want to spread out our spending power over different years so that we get to eat, the, in effect, the same number of cupcakes every year. So no one wants to party now and eat cat food at 80, and nobody wants to eat cat food today in order to have a great, you know, uh, have a big feast at, eight, at 90, whatever. So 
so that's the idea of consumption smoothing, and it's really uh, very simple, and, and it explains why we all save for retirement. We don't want to have our living standard drop. So the next thing to, to say is just um, uh, is to, to point you to this uh, diagram, which shows you that smoothing your living standard is not that simple. Your earnings and your fixed expenses, like your housing expenses and your tax payments, and things like college tuition, they're very, um, uh, very different from smooth. They're very um, discreet and uh, non-regular. So the, the, the idea here from economics is to try and find a smooth path through your spending and let your saving and dissaving adjust. So when your earnings are really high, uh, you don't spend it all. You save the difference between that and your you're spending in order to use that difference later in the future to pay for your spending when your earnings are low. So uh, there's lots of things going into getting to this right, right answer. This is a highly complicated problem that we're solving and our Maxify software is uh, really uh, kind of rocket science under the hood. It's uh, making calculations for most households uh, on what to do within about a half a second and it's taking into account all the factors that you see right now on the screen. You see that income uh, leads to, uh, you know, assets produce some income, asset income, how much income you have and affects your taxes. Your taxes affects how much you can spend. Your spending affects how much you're going to be saving. That it leads to more asset accumulation. Uh, that feeds back to affecting your income and your taxes, how much income you have. Uh, affects your insurance and your insurance premiums, which affects how much you can spend, but then spending affects how much insurance you need. So there's all this um, interconnectivity, uh, what we economists call simultaneity, that the software is handling uh, very, very quickly. Now, conventional financial planning, just very quickly, it has no interest in consumption smoothing. It asks you to set a target for your post-retirement spending goal. and uh, that target can be far too high or far too low. Imagine uh, if, I, if a financial planner asked me how much I want to spend in retirement, my immediate answer is a trillion, uh, $50 trillion a year. And then the planner is going to say, well, that's unrealistic. Well, uh, it is unrealistic. And what is realistic is what your resources will let you spend on an ongoing basis. But that has to be calculated by a very sophisticated software program, computer program, it can't be figured out by a person. It's just like asking somebody to, to figure out the trajectory to the, to the space uh, station, uh, asking the astronauts to figure that out without a computer. Uh, they won't be able to do it. So uh, financial planning, I'm trying to get across, doing done right is extremely complicated. It's, it's as complicated really as uh, uh, navigating to the moon or to uh, the space station in terms of the underlying uh, algorithms that have to be used. Uh, but, but even if you don't put in a target that's absolutely crazy, uh, you could target too high or too low. So if I target, for example, 10% too uh, low for spending in retirement, then I'm going to be told to uh, spend more when I'm young. And consequently, I'm going to have my living standard drop dramatically when I hit retirement age. And that's the actual, that's the opposite of consumption smoothing, that's consumption disruption. So uh, what we're saying in our software is that we, we don't uh, ask people to um, do something that the financial planner or the financial planning software should do. We don't ask you to solve your own financial plan. We ask you for your inputs, but then we figure out with our software uh, what the answer is. We don't ask you to give us the answer uh, for, for us. And just really quickly, it's giving, Maxify is giving you a full lifetime plan. It's finding this highest sustainable spending level. It's uh, dealing with the life insurance, uh, calculating the life insurance you need. Uh, it, it figures out and you'll see ways to dramatically raise your living standard. It incorporates all the federal and state tax and benefit programs. Also incorporates, incorporates Medicare Part B premiums. Uh, we've been in business for 27 years. So we've been spending 27 years getting uh, all the details straight 
on all the taxes, federal and state, Medicare Part B premiums, all aspects of fiscal policy that will affect you. And uh, we're using a technique uh, to solve this problem, which is called iterative dynamic programming, for which we got a patent. And it's a very special technique that has different programs inside the software uh, talking to each other, passing data back and forth until they converge to a mutually consistent, internally consistent solution. And that's how you deal with the chicken and egg problem that taxes determine spending, but spending determines what you're gonna have to pay in taxes. And these kinds of chicken and egg problems are solved by this uh, methodology, iterative dynamic programming. And again, it's the only economics-based financial planning tool that I know of. So it takes in, I'm just not gonna go through all these, but it takes in your standard inputs that you provide to any financial planning tool, like your current labor income, your 401k balances, your any pensions you have, um, your social security earnings history, your housing expenses. And then we're gonna see a bunch of reports that it comes out with as highly detailed, but also very clear and intuitive and simple to understand reports. And, uh, uh, and I've told you the difference between this and uh, and maximize my social security. So it, it does uh, essentially everything that maximize does, except it doesn't have all the detailed reports, but in terms of giving you the bottom line answer of what's gonna maximize your lifetime benefits, it will give you that answer. And this is just a some icons showing you some of the things the thing does, just repeating. And uh, here's the screen you're gonna see when you uh, first log on as an MMS user, when you log on into Maxify, you'll get these little instructions about how to import your social security earnings records into Maxify very quickly. So, and now I'm gonna deal with um, a case study. Uh, I'm gonna uh, flip over to the actual program. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, show you uh, when you first come to Maxify, this is the, uh, screen you're gonna see, this is our website, and it has uh, you know, a message for me, the president of the company. It has a bunch of articles that I've written about how to uh, get a higher living standard. Uh, one of these articles I re recently wrote for Forbes that had a half a million views, and it was about how to cash out your, whether it may, might make sense for certain households to cash out their 401k and uh, use the money to pay off their mortgage if they can't refinance at a low rate. We have a lot of press articles, you know, for example, um, New York Times, Market Watch, John Malden, who's got a big financial newsletter, CNBC, Wall Street Journal. So you get the idea of Washington Post. And uh, the, um, the other thing I wanna say is there's a great video here uh, explaining very quickly our software in a way that's a lot, um, uh, clearer perhaps than what I've just explained, or at least more fun. And we have down here at the bottom uh, case studies that you can go look at, which I think we have about 20 case studies that show you how to use the program very effectively. So the combination of um, uh, articles that I've written for Forbes and other outlets, uh, the case studies, the press articles, uh, that will really get you going. And we also have uh, tutorial videos once you get rolling with a program. So let me now close out of this and I'm going to um, uh, move over to the the actual program uh, that I've um, set up for a, a couple to show you. But before I do that, I want to just um, uh, indicate to you what you're going to see when you first try and set up your own case as a client. This is the first screen you'll see. You've seen some screens just now that are available to financial planners or are available to uh, other people like myself who are administrators of the website. But once you, first, you know, once you know, you start running the program as a household, the first thing, if you are a household user, first thing you'll see is a screen like this. It says, enter your, you're gonna be asked to do three things. Enter your basic info, enter your financial details, view your plan. And I just wanna show you how easy it is to enter um, input. So you might put in something like uh, Larry Jones and you'll hit continue and then you'll be asked, are you married? And then you'll say, well, I'm married or partnered, uh, married or partner. And then maybe I'll say I'm married. 
and do you have any kids? And you can enter kids if you do. I'll say no. But the key thing is uh, we're now we're asking people about um, their inputs in a in a wizard type fashion, so that it's very easy to uh, follow along. You don't have to. Uh, it's not a complicated interface. It works very much like TurboTax. So, and that's true throughout. And also, when you look at the output, you'll. Uh, it turns out that we, we show you certainly initially all the output piece by piece. So everything is really transparent. So now I'm just going to uh, look at a case of a couple that I set up before. They're Dan and Sue, and uh, I've set up a base profile and um, a couple other. Um, profiles uh, for them because you can you can have more than one profile that you can run for the couple if you set up an alternative profile like add an alternative profile you will uh, have the option to um, put in a new profile name and it will copy the data over from the base profile and then you can just modify that so let's um, go to the base profile and look at Dan Dan's a 58 year old we, we set by default his maximum age of life at 100. Uh, we could, uh, he can modify that to be whatever maximum age he wants to put. This is different from his life expectancy. None of us are gonna die on time exactly on our life expectancy. Life expectancy is an interesting thing for uh, an insurance company, but none of us can count on dying on time. We have to worry about the downside risk of living to our maximum age of life, there's going to be something like 3 million uh, Americans in uh, 30 years who are age 100 or over. So we're going to have 3 million centenarians. Now, if you think about the size of Boston, that's like three times the size of Boston in terms of number of, of, retire, of people over 100. And uh, uh, we specify a retirement age of 62. This is a male. And then uh, I entered this for Dan that he has uh, labor income. He's going to earn $100,000 until he retires at 60, the end of 61. And if I wanted to modify that, I would just hit edit and I would uh, uh, click on this little pencil and I would just change, you know, he could retire later uh, or different, earning a different amount. And then he could, uh, he could, we could add another job or he could have a higher level of earning, a different level of earnings after, at some point after, let's say, age 62, he continues to work. Uh, so, there's lots of flexibility in the uh, input screens for, um, uh, you know, here I go back to um, uh, to uh, this other uh, input screen, which is Social Security. And here we uh, are asking about uh, Dan's earnings record. That's the main thing we're asking about in the screen. If he is getting social disability benefits or retirement benefits already, we we ask about that or spousal benefits, but uh, otherwise, since Dan's not yet collecting, we're soliciting his past covered earnings, which uh, again, you can import from MMSS if you've already entered those, or you can enter those uh, from your social security earnings history that you can get at uh, ssa.gov. You can uh, just pull it up, copy it, select it and copy it, words and numbers and all, uh, copied into a into a uh, email, send it to your uh, well, send it to yourself, and then or just actually just take the copy and just paste it into our program. So there's many different ways to quickly enter your earnings records. Uh, or you could also type them in. It'll take about five minutes, so it's not a big deal. <clears throat> now, Dan here has a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar retirement account. <clears throat> He's contributing three thousand dollars. His employer is contributing 3,000. Sue is uh, uh, working. She's making a lot more money. She doesn't. I didn't put it in a retirement account for her. She also has a Social Security earnings record. She's also going to retire at 62. It's a higher uh, history, and uh, she has uh, a million five in retirement accounts. So the two of them together have a fair amount of retirement account money. Um, yeah, so there's that's her retirement account money. And they have a house. Uh, yeah, she does have a retirement account. I forgot that. Okay, so she does have a house, uh, she and Dan. It's worth 850000 
uh, they've got um, in this uh, setup, I've got them having the, the mortgage paid off, so there's no mortgage. But if I wanted to add a mortgage, I would just um, edit uh, and add it, add up add additional mortgage in here. I can also change the house up to two times. I can tell the program that if Dan dies, they're going to sell the house. Uh, Sue will sell the house and downsize, or vice versa. If Sue dies, <clears throat> this affects your life insurance uh, needs because obviously if your housing costs are gonna go down, you won't uh, need as much life insurance. In terms of regular assets, uh, they don't have a whole lot. They've got um, $50,000 in their checking account. Their social security strategy is both to take social security when they retire at 62 and uh, they have no kids. Uh, settings and assumptions is uh, allowing you to Look at our, we have a lot of default values for uh, rates of return. So right now we're using the prevailing long-term treasury bond rate, which is one around 1.25% and the inflation rate, which is similar. So the real return on uh, safe uh, investing these days is essentially zero. That's very unusual, but that's the reality of where we're at. The retirement accounts, uh, we've said they're gonna start withdrawing at 65 and so anyway there's lots of inputs here that are defaulted that you don't have to bother with until you want to come back if you want to tell the program that so the taxes are going to be increased uh, for example tax policy are we going to switch back to the pre-2017 um, tax reform you can specify that are there going to be increases in tax federal taxes or payroll taxes or state income taxes you can tell the program and also you can tell the program social security benefits will be cut and by how much. So lots of flexibility, you know, how much will Medicare Part B premiums increase uh, as you age. Anyway, um, I won't go through everything there, but um, we have some great help, um, uh, help center with a whole bunch of videos that you can look at, how-to videos that uh, will be, a, and also a glossary. So. Uh, we've really worked hard to make things as easy as possible. We also have fantastic customer support. You can enter a support ticket. You'll get an answer the same day. Often, uh, if you get stuck with something, I will be um, bugging you to call me uh, or somebody else in the company to, to discuss uh, directly with you any issue you have. So this is a small company. We hope you're going to help us um, make it a big company by telling everybody you know about our software. But right now we're you know a very um, cozy company to interact with and to be of help. So we're, I'm going to run the base report and we're going to see what it produces here, and we'll see how long it takes to run. That did an enormous number of calculations in an uh, amazingly quick amount of time. This was partly thanks to fantastic engineering under the hood, developed over 27 years, but also thanks to Amazon Web Servers that work very quickly. And uh, what you're seeing here is a life, the first thing uh, we wanna make sure is that what we uh, tell you to do is affordable. So here's all your lifetime resources. You got a million dollars in uh, present value and lifetime labor earnings, social security benefits, about two million coming in, all measured in the, all valued in the present, retirement account withdrawals for the couple, uh, regular assets, and it all ends up in terms of uh, dollars at the end of uh, this current year um, at about $5.4 million. And then the spending is exactly $5.4 million as well. And where's that going to? Well, housing expenses, which are off the top, fixed expenses, federal and state taxes, which you have to pay, um, retirement account contributions, and then Medicare premiums, which are quite high because they're very expensive. And there's no life insurance needed for this couple. Uh, and what's left is their discretionary spending. But the key question is, how can we uh, allocate that 3.7 million in lifetime discretionary spending power so that they can have a smooth ride over their lifetime? So here you see a very, very important chart. It shows in green the couple's uh, total annual income. And you can see the values by just going like this along the curve. And the green curve is uh, high because, initially high because they're 
working and then it becomes uh it drops when they retire but then uh social security kicks in and they start uh collecting some money and they also start getting withdrawals from retirement accounts and then they have uh they have uh these off the top fixed expenses that are in the blue curve and they represent taxes and uh housing expenses like property taxes and maintenance uh that kind of thing so we have this uh orange line which is their uh discretionary spending which is uh Eighty-eight thousand dollars for thirty-one, uh, four hundred thirty-one dollars per year. That's what they get to spend in today's dollars. Every number in our software is adjusted for inflation. So, if you look at this in the table view, you see that they get to spend eighty-eight thousand dollars, and it's just fixed every year, right up through age when they both die at age one hundred. They're the same age, and we show everything in today's dollars because we want to make sure people. Don't get confused by the value of a dollar today versus a dollar in 30 years after prices have increased from uh, potentially. Uh, you can see their income drops off when they uh, retire and then it picks up a little bit with Social Security and then they start getting retirement account withdrawals. And these are the fixed expenditures. Then they go up when the Medicare benef uh, premiums kick in. Now, is the whole thing affordable? Well, let's look at the uh, balance sheet here, which shows that. Gee, they started out at the end of this first year with this much money, and through time, they uh, accumulated money, and then at the end, uh, they um, spent down some of this money. That's what uh, these uh, re red uh, amounts are. They're spending down their accumulated assets so that at the end, they end up dying exactly broke. At age 100, they end up with nothing you know, because they're not going to live any longer. And uh, this means that we're not leaving any money on the table, that they're uh, spending their resources in full. And that's very important, but it's very conservative because we're assuming they live to their maximum age of life. And there's life, no life insurance uh, recommendations in this case. And there's lots of different reports to look at. You can look at what to do just this year. You can look at the sources of income, all the different uh, components. You can look at uh, uh, you can drill down into spending, the different spending components. You can have a housing report. You can look at the federal income tax calculations we're making uh, in detail. Uh, look at the different things like AGI and uh, taxable income. So lots of stuff to, uh, uh, to, to assure you that we're doing a very careful job. Now, let me just see if I can um, show you how to maximize this uh, report. What I'm going to do is have the program optimize over a couple of things here, which is to optimize retirement account withdrawal dates and also the Social Security benefits. And we'll just let this um, run. It may take a minute or so to run. And by the way, if you want to ask any questions, uh, in a few minutes I'll be uh, stopping to take questions. And Alex, I think, will be collecting them and feeding them over to me. So feel free, and again, we'll go on as long as there are questions till you know even 3:30. So anybody has questions, they will get answered. Uh, uh, well, you know, I don't know. I can't say 100% for sure because last time we had like 500 questions and we didn't get to every single one of them, but we tried to get to the most of them. And sometimes this maximization takes a while because we're looking at lots of different uh, ways to handle things. But the key thing I want to point out here is that we just made this couple $709,000. Now, if you think about that, $709,000 uh, in present value, that's their additional lifetime discretionary spending. Now, that's uh, that's a huge amount. That's like a 19% a, a increase in their lifetime spending. And we did this with no risk. In a sense, we're not putting the couple at risk. We're not telling them, Hey, take your retirement account money, which we are assuming is earning is very, being very safely invested in, in inflation index bonds, tips in effect, which um, are yielding nothing at this point because that's what the market's saying. So if this couple uh, once has made their you know way through life, doesn't want to have any more risk, they just want to insulate 
um, their living standard, and so they want to just ensure that they their money stays even with inflation. They could buy inflation index bonds right now, but we have figured out a way very safely <clears throat> with absolutely no risk of raising their lifetime living standard by seven hundred nine thousand dollars. Now, if I were selling uh, kitchen knives or um, special pots uh, or some complicated life insurance policy, you might think I was selling you some snake oil. But if I were doing that, I would be fired very quickly as a professor at Boston University. So I'm not doing that. I'm trying to uh, tell you uh, things that I really believe are absolutely 100% true. Why did the living standard go up by uh, $709,000? Well, the answer is, and by the way, the living standard, the, the, the annual, uh, I'm sorry, the, the lifetime discretionary spending went up by, by $709,000. The annual uh, living standard uh, went, um, initially went up to here, and then it went up a whole lot more when the couple starts taking Social Security, which they now start taking at age 70. So the basic program, the basic answer is that the program is telling them to wait to be patient to take social security not at 62 but to wait till age 70 when their benefits will start adjusted for inflation at about 70 of uh, three or four percent higher every year for the rest of their life so they'll give up eight years of, of um, no benefits of lower benefits for eight years but they're going to get a, a whole lot more every year thereafter so that if they make it to 100, you know, they're gonna be spending, uh, they're gonna have a living standard that's, uh, uh, as I said, about 19% higher for the rest of the life. And the program is also, let's see what it's recommending on, um, uh, yeah, it's recommending wait till age 70. And then it's saying uh, they should, um, actually start taking their retirement account money early, uh, somewhat earlier to spread the taxes over time. That's um, uh, you know, somewhat surprising probably, probably to many of you. It was surprising to me when I looked at the result, but we're looking at every possible way in which they take their retirement account benefits. Should Sutri take her money at, six, at 69, start her retirement account withdrawals then? Should Dan start hers at, um, uh, at start, start his at uh, 63, or should they both wait till 76? Uh, of course, that would be subject to um, the uh, required minimum distribution uh, uh, payments, which um, have to start now at age 72, which are incorporated in the program. So uh, the, the program has this ability to robo optimize your living standard by clicking. Uh, to maximize it. But if you wanted to do something, uh, for example, if you wanted to have uh, set up another plan uh, that um, has the couple retiring at 67. So let me make sure that that's in there. Uh, we have him working till seven, till 60, sorry, yeah, till 67. And we have Sue working till 67 in this uh, case I manually set up I set up an alternative uh, profile and her retirement age now is 67 so that's all set up and we have them contributing to the retirement accounts till 67 so I'm going to compare that case with the base case that I just showed you and uh, this has them I think waiting till 67 to take Social Security and now we have them getting their um, lifetime discretionary spending to rise by $1.1 million. So it's just like they found $1.1 million after tax, tax-free, on the sidewalk by walking out on the street uh, today. There's that big pile of money, $1.1 million. That's what this program has produced because it said, look, by working longer, by waiting to take Social Security till 67, by uh, being smart, uh, well, obviously it's gonna incur more taxes, but uh, on balance, you're gonna end up with a much higher lifetime discre uh, discretion spending and a much higher uh, living standard. It's almost, uh, it's over a quarter, uh, it's roughly about 28% higher lifetime 
uh, spending and annual living standard. So there are things you can do for your clients if you're a financial planner. There are things you can do for yourself if you're a household to uh, make up for the terrible things that are happening to us economically, let alone the terrible loss of life and the terrible illnesses that people that have had this disease are experiencing even post <coughs> recovery. <coughs> there are there is some um, slightly good news, or significantly good news on the financial side, uh, potentially available. This number is not going to be your number. It may be much smaller for your household. It could be bigger for your household, but it's worth uh, finding out whether you can optimize your lifetime uh, decisions, your lifetime financial uh, situation. So with this, I'm going to uh, stop. It's now 20 minutes to the hour. I'm going to ask Alex if he's got some questions for me. And I will make changes uh, on the fly and continue to illustrate the program in responding to questions unless that's not the uh, the best thing to do for the question.